everyone in today's video i am going to take you through what can only be described as the simplest explanation of descriptive research this is the simplest explanation because i will be using a number of different kind of examples which will help in easy understanding of the topic as well as allow you to apply the knowledge in the context of your own research so maybe if you are doing it in education or medical field or agriculture it doesn't matter i will be using examples from different sectors of life so that you can then understand it simply and then apply it in your own research in today's video i am going to explain what is descriptive research when do we use it what are the advantages and disadvantages of this research the methodologies that are employed the advantages of using these methodologies and the disadvantages so that you have a very simple understanding i am also mindful that i need to keep this video short so that it doesn't become too long and boring if you don't know already descriptive research is basically observing and describing the behavior of a subject or a number of subjects without influencing it in any way as a researcher in a descriptive research design it is called a descriptive design the researcher can choose to be either a complete observer an observer as a participant a participant as an observer or a full participant for example if you are in a supermarket and as a researcher you want to monitor and track the customers selection and purchasing trends you can do so from a distance either as a complete observer from behind the counter where customers pay or as an observer who is also participating in the shopping trend in the supermarket it is up to you this kind of research is also used in uh, places where you want to describe the behavior for example monash university carried out a survey of 1000 australian shoppers just to find out if post covid the popularity of online shopping has increased or decreased with respect to the brick and mortar or the physical stores descriptive data or descriptive research collects the data that is used to answer a wide range of what when and how questions pertaining to a particular population or group for example descriptive studies might be used to answer questions such as what percentage of kindergarten teachers have a bachelor's degree or maybe higher what is the average reading ability of four year olds when they first enter kindergarten so on and so forth the descriptive research method primarily focuses on describing the nature of a demographic segment without focusing on why a particular phenomenon occurs in other words it describes the subject of the research without covering why it happens for example what is the purchasing pattern of buyers in london but descriptive research will not cover any investigation information about why this pattern exists among buyers in london because for any uh, brand to break into the market understanding the nature of the market is the study's main goal in this kind of research normally one variable is investigated although many will argue that more than one variable can also be investigated this kind of research normally uses case studies surveys cross sectional studies as methodologies or data collection methods case studies can be used or specifically used as a popular data collection method because it can be referred or used to describe for example the description of a patient with an unusual disease or with simultaneous occurrence of more than one condition here the example i will discuss is hiv aids was first recognized through a case report of disseminated kaposi sarcoma in a young homosexual man and a case series of such men with a certain kind of pneumonia 
Surveys are also used as a popular data collection method. For example, a researcher uh, can use descriptive research to research the income of the employees in a company and the relationship of the income with their performance in the organization. A survey will be carried out to gather enough data about the income of the employees, then their performance will be evaluated and compared to the income. Other methods that I told you can be used is of course observation or cross-sectional studies. So I'll give you an example of a cross-sectional study is that for example, if you are trying to monitor that people who live on islands are more prone to autoimmune diseases or maybe cancer or maybe a short height, a shorter height than five feet, something like that. So then you can also use descriptive research. Let's study the advantages and disadvantages of descriptive research now. So the advantages of descriptive research is it is very effective to study or analyze topics and issues that cannot be quantified, that you cannot uh, allocate a number to, a numerical value to. For example, behaviors. So when we talked about behaviors of shoppers in London, you cannot quantify it with numbers. So that is where the uh, descriptive research comes in handy. So you can you can use both qualitative and quantitative data collection methods. Don't think that just because you're studying behaviors, you cannot uh, use quantitative methods. You have to use qualitative. Uh, you can use quantitative and qualitative. For I'll give you an example. Uh, for example, if you're trying to just get a yes or no answers, uh, then of course it is quantitative. For example, if you're trying to ask people, uh, is online shopping better than physical shopping? So you're trying to get a yes or no answers. So you say online shopping is better than physical shopping. 50% will say yes, maybe 50% will say no, or maybe 50% will say yes, 20% will say no, 30% will say not sure, something like that. But if you ask what items they prefer to buy online versus offline, then of course the descriptive responses is the way to go. And then that becomes kind of a qualitative research setting, although you're still doing descriptive research. Here also, you are not trying to find the why. You are just trying to find what people prefer to buy online versus offline. Remember, the why, the why is not investigated in descriptive research. Here, the possibility is to observe the phenomena in a completely natural and unchanged environment. So, for example, you, you are looking at people uh, shopping. Uh, you are observing people living in a certain way or eating certain kinds of food. Uh, that may be causing certain kinds of diseases or living in certain cold climates uh, which leads to autoimmune disorders or living in valleys where the pollen might settle in leading to breathing issues. These are all natural settings. You're not changing anything, right? And that is why it has practical use for decision making. You can actually implica implement it for practical decision making. Uh, similarly, we have disadvantages of descriptive research, like I told you from the very first go, is that you cannot use it to uh, answer the why of a research, only the what, when, and how of a research. Uh, majority of the descriptive research studies are not repeatable due to their observational nature. For example, um, case reports and case series refer to a solitary patient or to only a few cases, which may represent a chance occurrence. So for example, if you are observing the shopping behavior of people in a supermarket, you are just observing those people that may not represent the entire population or may not represent the other physical stores which are in the area. So that's why the descriptive studies are not helpful in identifying the cause behind a described phenomena. Um, so like I explained, if you are trying to study um, whether myopia occurs in children of less than five years old um, or uh, because of excessive use of ipad you are only observing children uh, of that particular so there's a sampling error you can say and sampling error occurs in other other research as well so a bias kind of creeps in because there is absence of uh, statistical or numerical data you're observing people so you're basically observing a, a, a particular section of the population and this is a bias that can occur in any type of research but because there is not numerical numbers involved it's basically observation and observation can also be um, uh, affected by bias because you are observing it or maybe the two researchers are observing it it does not mean that there is objectivity in the research uh, so but you can always address it like i said bias occurs in every kind of research so you should not be too bothered by it 
So I hope you guys uh, like this video and you found it simple enough. And the fact that I used a few different kind of examples maybe helped you in understanding when to use this kind of research. If not, then um, let me know uh, what are the questions that I can address and I will try my best to do so. Thank you for watching and bye for now. See you in my next video.